This video provides an introduction to SymPy. SymPy provides a Python-based framework to create simulations in real time. We can use process functions or methods to structure our simulation. Processes yield events, which differs from a return value in normal functions or methods. These processes exist in environments. If you are new to generators in Python, I have done another video discussing generators. It might be useful to watch that first. I would strongly recommend to create a virtual environment first and activate the environment and then install SymPy. This gives you a lot more control over dependencies. We might also add a few other packages like NumPy, Matplotlib, if required, um, in particular if you want to visualize your simulation. Let's get into it. So I'm here in my folder where I will work and I now switch to the command line and create my environment. So I can just click up here, type in cmd, that opens my command prompt and then I start creating my environment. I have done um, another video on virtual environments in Python as the pip installer. So if you're new to that, uh, please have a look first. So I type in python minus m venf, that's for virtual environment. And then I name it, I just call it sim for simulation. So after this is done, when you go back to the folder, you see now the sim folder emerging. And that is actually now your environment. So anything we do now, we do inside this environment and we can install packages and we have a lot more control. So first we have to activate the environment. We do this by navigating to the subfolder scripts and then we just um, put activate there. So the name of the environment, scripts and activate. And now you see in brackets the name of your environment before the prompt. Yeah, so you see that. So that means the environment is now ready. Now we do our installation. So I install now using the pip installer SymPy and um, then I go on and might install maybe some other things like NumPy if needed. And um, for visualization I use matplotlib. To get used to SymPy our basic simulation focuses on creating customers randomly. Every minute the probability that a customer enters the shop is denoted ARR which is one of our model parameters. So arrival probability. In total, we want to stop the simulation after 20 customers arrived. We are interested in the time interval between customers arriving. Such so-called waiting time distributions matter in many applications, including high frequency trading patterns. So now I move into my Python script. Um, of course, I first import SymPy, NumPy, Matplotlib, and I start with my model parameters. So in here, we do our import statements. We import SymPy, we import NumPy as NP, and then um, in a standard way, we do matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And I start with model parameters. So I quite like doing this um, to make this explicit. And then to collect my data, I use a NumPy array. This is quite um, efficient. So I start simply here with um, np.0. So it's an, an all zero um, array. The dimension is my total number of customers. Of course, in functions or methods, uh, you might be used to seeing the keyword return. However, SymPy uses processes, which are Python generators. The keyword refers in this case to yield. Let's explore our purchase generator line by line. So it looks initially like any other function. So you have the def keyword and then I'd call this purchase and then I might put in some arguments. 
so here I start my timer. I might interpret this as minutes. Of course, it's entirely up to you. And I set the minutes equal to zero. And then I start a while loop. The while loop keeps running until something happens, until it's no longer true. So the block inside the loop keeps going until an event occurs. While the process runs in discrete time, minutes are added and the probability is calculated using a random number generator in NumPy. Then we assess whether the probability is less than the arrival probability, which triggers an event. In our case, our interpretation is a customer enters the shop. So if we look at the structure, we run the loop, uh, we generate constantly probabilities, which we draw from a random distribution. We increase our minutes, so plus equal to one. We might, just to check it, print this probability, and then we check using this um, if statement here, whether our rolled dice, our probability, is below our arrival probability, which we define up here. That's our argument. Yeah, and of course that um, we um, will modify if required. I put here a default in, you don't have to. And you already see here env for environment. So you will see that later in action because that's how SymPy operates. It operates in environments. If this is triggered, so if we are below the arrival probability, so this event occurs, then I use some formatted strings to print out some basic information. And here you see I refer to my environment, which I haven't really created yet, but my um, function, or better say my process, uses that um, in the arguments. And I use here on this environment the attribute now. You don't see any open close brackets, which means that's an attribute. So that will give me basically a counter. And I have a placeholder here using the curly brackets. It's in my formatted string indicated by the F in front. And then I can also display the minutes it took. And that's basically the waiting time distribution. And then we can add the data. Um, to our interval, which simply collects our information. Yeah, so that's basically what it is. And here we start, of course, at zero. So the counter will start counting at one, but of course Python starts counting from zero. So I will adjust the index accordingly. So rectangular brackets for indexing, and I throw in the minutes simulated, and then I reset the timer. And I start again. And what is maybe for you less um, common is now this yield um, keyword. And that is basically generating the event under this con condition. And I have a timeout one. So that basically means you, you interrupt the process. Now this is very common for many simulations that if an event occurs, you stop for a second the process and then you restart the process until the next customer arrives. What that does is it also ensures that um, you would have not um, the occurrence of two customers simultaneously. So they would be always spaced out. This makes sense if you go into um, post-sort distributions and so on. I don't want to bore you with the details. So that is our process defined. The next thing is we do um, create our environment, our environment instance. I call this env, and then I refer to SymPy and um, use the environment class. You see that here, it's a capital spelling. This usually indicates a class. So this creates um, now our environment. Then I run the process until I go to the level of 20 simulated customers and I pass in my parameter here, which I defined 
up there in line 15 and I run it up to the number required. Again, it's, um, you know, the counting um, is from one in my um, environment in the now um, attribute. And that would run basically my simulation. So here we are actually done. What I do next is just a visualization. So um, I generate for that purpose um, the X dimension. So that's my horizontal axis, simply looking at all the customers. And I just want to plot um, the different waiting times. And um, that I do then in NumPy first, and then I use um, my matplotlib.pyplot to tidy things up. Most likely have seen that before, so I won't really spend um, any time on that. Again, if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, like and share and spread the joy of data analysis. Good, so that's actually all. It's a very, very simple example just to get you started, you know, thinking about the environment, thinking about this particular event. Of course, later we have several events interacting and things get a lot more exciting and realistic. Let's run this and see what happens. So with my environment activated. So always check whether it's activated, looking at the brackets. Um, I think I call this basic.py, the script. I just run it now. And here we are. So it's all running. It looks pretty good. And we have our figure, which we also save. So it could be used um, in a PowerPoint presentation, in a LaTeX file, wherever you want to put it. So we have our waiting distribution here, our different um, minutes between customers. So that's interesting. Of course, we could then analyze it further. We can look at the density of it. Uh, we can play around a little bit. Of course, here it's, it's quite a trivial uh, example. But that is definitely a nice way um, to visualize it. Then, as you can see, we have our customers arriving and it starts also showing all these probabilities. It's just um, as a test later, of course, you can get rid of the print statement. But quite frequently, I like to see um, more, you know, explicit statements on my terminal just to check whether things are running as expected. So for instance, if you just pop in somewhere here, so here's a customer number 16 arriving. It took um, 63 minutes. So there's a bit of a waiting time. And then you start running again. So now we have a very, very simple model that would um, model randomly customers ar arriving. So this could be useful later if you want to think about stuff like, um, you know, a logistics problem you know, inventory balances, what happens there, how do you organize shipments, you can make things a lot more exciting and complicated. Good, I hope you enjoyed that. I see you in the next one.